Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech and what's really good. So today we're taking a look at the Master Keys MK750 from Cooler Master. Now this keyboard caught my eye. So full disclosure, I reached out to Cooler Master to see if they would send me a review unit and they obliged. And if you think that affects my review in the slightest, then you must be new here. The first thing that got my attention about this board was its slim form factor. I mean, there are basically no margins around these keys. And that's cool for me because due to work, I like to have a 10 key. But a lot of times those boards get really big on the desk and it's not my favorite setup for gaming. So this looked like a good middle of the road solution for me. The other thing was the price. At a street price of 150, just about everywhere you look, that puts this board in direct competition with the likes of Logitech, Razer, and Corsair. So obviously the boys at Cooler Master thought they had a winner on their hands. But do they? Let's see how it stacks up. So what we have here is a slim, full RGB floating switch keyboard with cherry switches brown in this case but you can also get it with blues or reds and an anodized aluminum top plate which due to the lack of texture found on a brushed aluminum could be mistaken for plastic your keycaps are abs and a reserve font for those of you not keen on corsair's current font choice dedicated media keys for mute play pause and track forward and back it also has a subtle light bar on the left right and front of the board the side lining is exposed but the front bar is behind a lightly tinted acrylic piece it's about an eighth of an inch thick. It also has a full size standard bottom row, which if you're into getting your own custom keycaps, you know this can be really expensive and they're not necessarily compatible with different manufacturers, especially Corsair sticks out here because they do use a non-standard bottom row on their keyboards. Included in the box is a magnetic detachable wrist rest, replacement keys for your escape, WASD and arrow keys, a keycap puller, and these are double shot PBT keys versus the ABS that are featured on the rest of the board. You also get a braided USB type C cable, which is gold plated, features a Cooler Master Purple inside the plug. Also included is a legend for the function keys. Normally you'd be forgiven for not cracking the manual on a keyboard, but in this particular case, you'd be making a mistake. More on that in a sec. What's not on offer here is dedicated audio pass-through, dedicated USB pass-through, dedicated macro keys, dedicated volume buttons, and most importantly to me, a really nice volume roller like you see on some of the Corsair and Logitech boards. How important these features are will vary by individual, but for me, I never mess with an audio pass-through or USB pass-through because in all actuality, I don't like the really thick, fixed cable that comes off most of my keyboards from Razer and Corsair. I much prefer the thin, detachable, especially Type-C USB connected cable found here. I definitely see a missed opportunity here in the dedicated media keys. You can still control the volume on the keyboard with function and page up or page down, but in all actuality, in my lifetime of using a computer, I don't think I have ever used the track forward or track back buttons on the dedicated media keys. So for me, I would have really liked to see those buttons be volume up and volume down with the track forward and track back relegated to the function key. You may have also noticed by now that there's no indicator LEDs for your caps lock, num lock, etc. So that's actually handled by the illumination on the key itself, which I guess isn't a bad trade-off for the slim margins around the keys. But at the same time, I thought I had a dead LED right out of the box until I depressed the caps lock. Obviously with the MX switches, typing on this thing is an absolute breeze and Cooler Master did manage to provide us with a solid space bar. The only reason I point that out is because Corsair fails to do this on even their highest end boards. It always feels really loose and cheap. Not the case here. It's also got all the usual stuff you'd expect from a high end board. One millisecond input time, a thousand hertz polling rate, and in key rollover. The underside of the board is pretty standard stuff. You have the USB connection. You also have cable routing channels to take it out the left right or middle rear of the board and you get a couple of flip down feet if you want to sit the keyboard at an angle i've got to talk about this wrist rest the downside depending on your point of view is that when you put it up against the keyboard it blocks the lower light bar the upside is pretty much like everything else it's a leatherette with memory foam and embossed with the cooler master logo it's got its own rubber feet and attaches magnetically and it's just strong enough to stay put the wrist rest on my k70 rapid fire is more cosmetic than anything and as a matter of fact i can't remember a single time that my wrist was able to actually rest on it. That's not the case here. I've got larger hands, so being able to pull this rest away from the keyboard a couple inches and actually use it is a godsend. When I'm done, I can simply slide it back up and into place, but I actually prefer it stowed away when not in use because I feel like it detracts from the minimal aesthetic. But again, that's a matter of personal taste. Lighting on the board is very good. It's got almost like a muted softness. Great color uniformity. All the usual LED effects are on offer here, and I won't bore you with all the modes, but there's some great stuff in there. This leads me to one of my favorite parts about the board. It does not require software. That may seem insignificant, but if all your peripherals are from different manufacturers like mine are, that means at any moment in time, I have software running 
from Corsair, Razer, SteelSeries, Logitech, and now potentially Cooler Master. So not having to install another piece of software is awesome to me. Lighting mode, color settings, speed, direction, brightness, macro assignment, profile switching are all available without using any software. And yes, you can even play Snake on the keyboard if you want to. Now I do have to note that color selection in terms of full RGB is not 100% on the hardware itself. What I mean by that is when you're picking a color, you have to pick from nine or 10 different levels of red, blue, or green and blend them together to get your color, which means if you have something really specific in your setup, you might not be able to nail that 100% without software. It would have been really cool to see a feature here where we could punch in a hex code and have the keyboard display that color. If there is a way to do that, I wasn't able to figure it out. Which means that yes, there is software available for this. And if there's any opportunity for this board whatsoever, it definitely lies with the software. It's not terribly intuitive. And if you're spoiled by like Corsair Q and its use of layers to achieve some really advanced lighting techniques, you're not gonna find that here. If you're a macro heavy user or you need numerous custom profiles for different games, you'll probably also be a little disappointed here. Macros can be recorded either from the keyboard itself or from the software. And you can't set them to like single trigger or repeat. And it's also worth noting you can't assign any macros to shifted keys. There's only four profiles and forget about the idea of it picking a profile based on what title you launch. It's simply not offered at this point in time. So Cooler Master, if you guys are watching, please give this keyboard the software functionality it deserves at this price point. While it's not terribly important to me, I know there's numerous users out there who will be disappointed if they really like to get under the hood, either with lighting customization or with macro mechanics. So, moment of truth time. If you haven't managed to piece it together from this review so far, I'm absolutely in love with this board. As a matter of fact, this is gonna be replacing my K70 Rapid Fire as my daily driver. I love the design, the footprint, the standard bottom row, the wrist rest, and the option to forego software. I'm not a big fan of the dedicated media key configuration and of course the software, and I'm fairly indifferent about the USB and audio pass-through not being there, though I will say I greatly prefer the slimmer USB Type-C cable that is replaceable over the thicker cables on offer from some of the other manufacturers. I really feel like Cooler Master's minimal design here is the star of the show. It holds its own against Logitech, it trades blows with Corsair, and in my mind, it absolutely decimates Razer's outdated recessed frame design on the Black Widow. I'm happy with the no software approach, but for mass market, they're gonna really need to step up their software game to make this thing a top tier contender. If you wanna grab one for yourself, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up. Learn my test, so really solid job. Really solid job.